Hi everyone! Welcome to the year of the year drawing near to Jesus of Grace Unlimited Church Online. So glad that you are watching this together with me. I am so excited for the theme of this year because as you draw near to Him, He will show you much more love by using your love language to speak to you and Him will come in supernaturally warm and sweet, which only in between you and Him. Amen. Remember to prepare your Holy Communion elements if you haven't already and make sure the elements are within your reach as we will partake of the Holy Communion together very soon as a church family. Due to our current state of conditional movement control order in Sarawak, we will not be holding our physical church services tentatively. So at the meantime, let us stay connected by following us through our digital platform as shown on the screen. And now, let's go praise Him and live up His name Hi. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Grace Unlimited online service. It is great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Um, I just want to share a verse with you guys. In James 5, 8, um, You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Well, Joseph waited for 14 years. David waited for 15 years. Abraham waited for 25 years. And our Lord Jesus waited for 30 years. If God is making you wait, there's a done good reason. Amen? So trust Him. Hallelujah! Let us give Him praise. Hallelujah! And worship this great God. Hallelujah! 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 Father, found love beyond all reason. You gave your life, you wrote for me And call me on forever Called in the mercy for now Found hope, found life, found no one need You are one need The time has come to stand for all we believe I'm gonna give my praise to you, Jesus. Beyond all reason, you gave your life, you wrote for me, and call me yours forever. Called in the mercy for now, found hope, found life, found all I need. You all I need. The time has come to stand for all who believe. The praise goes out to you Today, today, today I live for one thing To give you praise in everything I do Yeah, all the praise goes out to you Time has 
believe in. So I for one am gonna give my praise to you. Time has come. The time has come to stand for all who believe in. So I for one am gonna give my praise to you. Praise goes out to you in everything I do. Yeah, the praise goes out to you in everything I do. Yeah, the praise goes out to you. of Jesus all this promise one for me for he paid the highest ransom once for always for my freedom I will boast in Christ righteousness and not my own I will cling to Christ my hope His mercy reigns now and forever love will never lose its power all my failures not erase now I walk within your favor grace and ending grace and ending my salvation I will boast in Christ alone his righteousness and not In Christ alone. 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Good morning, church and fellow believers in Christ. As we come to the Lord's table to partake of the communion, I just want to share this morning about the divine exchange. If you remember in the Old Testament, when the priest does the sin offering on behalf of the sinner at the temple, the sinner actually brought an unblemished animal, like a lamb. And he brings it to the priest. The priest does not examine the sinner because he knows exactly why he was there. He actually examines the sacrifice, the sacrificial animal. And that represents our Lord Jesus. And when the priest is happy that the animal is unblemished, the sinner actually put his hand upon the animal, thus transferring his sin onto the animal. And likewise, the righteousness of the lamb is transferred to the sinner. And then, then, he is no longer a sinner. He walks out of that place a new person. He has a righteousness that he has never experienced before. So that righteousness stays with him. But just for one year, imagine the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The eternal blood of Christ. I want you to remember when we come to the Lord's table to partake of His body and His blood, we know that we come with thanksgiving because our sins are not covered by the blood of bulls and goats. Our sins are remitted away. That's why John, when he looks at Jesus, said, Here is the Lamb of God that taketh the sins of the world. Our sins are put away. We are not covered. So don't be sin conscious. That is the greatest lie of the devil. But be Jesus conscious. So this morning, I want you to remember this divine exchange that took place. When you believe, that's the day when Christ's righteousness is your righteousness. You are not your own righteousness. I just want to read from Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Surely He took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered Him punished by God, stricken by Him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus, the perfect lamb, that his body was punished and pierced so that we will experience wholeness. Lord, we just want to thank you that the divine exchange means we took the very best from your son and he took our very worst 
and thank you for that gift of righteousness and that incredible health that you have given us through your body. Let us remember this body broken for us as, as recorded in Isaiah 53. Let us partake the Lord's body. In the same manner, during the Lord's Supper, He took the cup and, he, and when He had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ is your gift of righteousness. We drink this cup with thanksgiving because the righteousness that the Lamb has given us is truly eternal. Let's drink together. Lord, we just want to thank you for the divine exchange, for the wholeness that we feel when your body was pierced, bruised and broken for us, that health resides in us. We thank you for the shedding of your blood, for the remission of sins, that our sins are not covered, they are put away forever. Thank you, Lord for this divine exchange that we experience with thanksgiving. Amen. Now, church, we come to the offering and tithing. This is for believers who had understanding of the tithing, that we are truly a blessed people, and out of the overflow, we give. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9, I just want to read a passage that the Lord has put in my heart. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your, for your sake He became poor, so that you through His poverty might become rich. The thing of the Lord's blessing in our lives is basically a finished work. And we must see ourselves through the eyes of faith as the Lord sees us, a blessed people. I remember a verse that the cattle from a thousand hills belongs to the Lord, the Creator God. And when we give, we are honouring Him. So as you give, do your tithing and offering, remember that we did what we did to give back to Him to honour Him and to acknowledge that He is our source. He is truly our blessings. Not the people around us, but the Lord. And we come with thanksgiving. Give with a sense of freedom. For those who are giving online, the details are on the screen below. And I would like to offer a prayer. Whatever mode of payment that you are accustomed to, I just want to pray over it that the Lord truly will multiply. The Lord will truly bless what you gave. For the sum that you gave will be holy and it will be so blessed for the people around that you will be a continued blessing as we go on this new year that we continue to prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, good morning. Um, welcome to an exciting Sunday service, right? Uh, let me show you the exciting props that I have with me this morning. And uh, it's a pair of A. Jordan. It's the most famous um, basketball shoes. Legend says that if you use this shoe, um, even though you're under six foot, you are able to slam dunk with it, all right? So uh, if you watch uh, the news recently, there was a, a basketball documentary about Michael Jordan, the most famous basketball player. Uh, it's called The Last Dance. And after that documentary, an old pair of A. Jordan was sold for 
US $560,000. That's more than 2 million ringgit, right? Wow, right? And now, uh, why am I showing you this morning? Uh, because I, I, I want this to be like a faith picture. I want this to be, this sermon uh, to have a picture that you can remember with, right? So the A Jordan, I was, as I was preparing, I was just thinking, it sounds like Jordanian Airlines, right? A Jordan, right? But uh, that's not the thing that I want you to have a picture of the Jordanian Airlines. But um, something that is more familiar, you know the word A Jordan, you can also read it in Bahasa Malaysia, right? Which is I Jordan, all right? I Jordan. And uh, so that's just something I want you to have because as I was preparing, um, I realized even last night I was with a brother having dinner and I was just sharing this with him. He says, hey, I also have the same revelation, right? Because uh, I feel that it's very, very relevant for our time. So let me just put this down here first. And I'll drop this sermon. You can look at these beautiful shoes uh, which I borrowed, borrowed from a brother, all right? So um, uh, the word Jordan actually means to, is from the Hebrew word uh, Yadan, right? Yadan means to go down uh, and it is, it's a picture of the Jordan River flowing into the Dead Sea and um, it's more than just a physical picture I believe there are uh, spiritual significance also right, concerning uh, the River Jordan the River Jordan is the most mentioned river in the Bible right? But uh, so today we want to look at three stories and these three stories concerns you and I pray you have a revelation of this truth as we uh, look at the river Jordan, I Jordan, all right? Praise the Lord. So uh, let's begin from Numbers chapter 33, verse 55, 51, right? And it says uh, concerning the... Actually, there are two crossing in the Bible, right? Two uh, crossing in the Bible. And most of us know about the crossing of the Red Sea. But do you know that uh, there's another crossing that is the crossing of the... River Jordan. And uh, in Numbers chapter 33, verse 51, it says, Speak to the son of Israel and say to them, When you have passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, hallelujah, and we're recording here in uh, Canaan Square, uh, and then verse 53, And you shall possess the land and live in it, for I have given you the land to possess, to possess it, right? So this morning, uh, crossing into the into the Jordan is a picture of the full gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a picture of our salvation, and our salvation is always twofold. Right? When we cross over from uh, cross over the Red Sea, we are being delivered from sin. We are de delivered from slavery. But when we cross over into the river, uh, when we cross over the Jordan, we are actually inheriting everything that the Lord has given to us. Amen. We want to see your full salvation, the full gospel of Jesus Christ this morning, right? So we want to begin um, in um, the, the first five books of the Bible concerning the crossing of the River Jordan. And in Deuteronomy chapter 9, uh, verse 1, it says, Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today to go in to dispose nations greater and mightier than you, cities, cities great and fortified up to heaven. And that's a picture I want you to see, right? God wants you to be able to cross the Jordan to dispose all your enemies. And then verse, verse 2 says, A people great and tall, the sons of the Anakin, whom you know and of whom you have heard, it says, who can stand before the sons of Anak? So the Anakins are the giants that are in your life. And um, very interesting, right? And we're always talking, when we look at these verses, we always talk about the Joshua generation. But when I was just reading this again, I realized this is not the Joshua generation, right? Because Joshua's generation died in the wilderness. Only Joshua and Caleb was left. But this is the new generation. And the new generation is the Benjamin generation. The Benjamin generation is the generation, the grace generation that will inherit the land, inherit the promise. For you and I, we are the Benjamin generation that will go in and possess the land, right? I believe it. I declare it over all your lives, right? That you will inherit, inherit all the promises of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Then verse 3, right? Know therefore that today that he who goes over before you 
uh, as a consuming fire is the Lord your God. He will destroy them and subdue them before you. So you shall drive them out and make them perish quickly as the Lord has promised you. Right? When I was just reading this, I realised that uh, when, when we say the Lord is a consuming fire, it's not for you. Right? It's for your enemies. Right? Many times people quote this for the church. Oh, God is a consuming fire. No, the consuming fire is for all the enemies in your life. Amen? And on the cross, right, um, what Jesus has done, God is your consuming fire. Amen? So if there are, pro- there are difficulties, there are problems, there are situations in your life, God is your consuming fire against all your enemies. Praise the Lord, right? So, Peter says, And now I command you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified, right? So this morning, this message is about receiving your inheritance. Amen? Praise the Lord, right? So uh, I call this and I title this message, The Miracles of the A. Jordan, right? And I'll show you where the A. Jordan is, even in uh, the Bible. Amen? Praise the Lord, right? So let's look at the first crossing again. Um, uh, sanctified, right? So this morning, this message is about receiving your inheritance. Amen? Praise the Lord, right? So, uh, I call this and I title this message, The Miracles of the A. Jordan, right? And I'll show you where the A. Jordan is, even in uh, the Bible. Amen? Praise the Lord, right? So, let's look at the first crossing again. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 10, right? And, uh, and this is an important event, right? And knowing that the old generations have died, the new generation being led by Joshua. The Moses generation has died. The new generation led by Joshua. And Joshua said, Here is how you shall know that the living God is among you and that He will without fail drive out from you, from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, and the Perizzites, the Gigashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Right? So all these enemies, you have many enemies in your life. God is going to drive them out from your life, right? In verse 11, Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord for the earth. I underline for you to see. The the, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth, right? So, hallelujah. And we have have a covenant with this God. We have a new covenant with this God. The Lord of all the earth has a covenant with you. It's passing over before you into the Jordan, right? So every day, every month, every week, every year, God always goes before you and He's gone ahead of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, right? So we're going to look at three important incidents at the River Jordan and this is the first. Amen. And verse 13, and when the sole of the feet of the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant, of Ark of the Lord, right? So this is the A Jordan in the Bible, right? When they uh, step into the river and it's a priest that goes before carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan and the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off flowing and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. So it's like almost a picture like the crossing of the Red Sea, but this is a river, right? Praise the Lord. And um, it's very interesting, right? Because uh, when you read the Bible concerning the children of Israel, it says for 40 years, the their cloth did not weigh out, their shoes did not weigh out in Deuteronomy 29 verse 5, right? But in uh, Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 21, it says of the incident, the incident their, their feet were not swollen, right? So they were wearing miraculous shoes throughout, right? For this new generation. And I want to imagine, I want to believe, right? Because uh, they were young, right? When they crossed the Red, Red Sea, right? They were from the young generation that their shoes grow with them, their clothing grow with them. Because in the wilderness, there is no parts and grain, right? There is no departmental store, right? So what they wore was miraculous clothing, amen? And, uh, and so when the soul of the priest that carry the Ark of the Covenant, cross the river Jordan, the water departs. Right? Verse 14 says, So when the people set up from the tents to pass over the Jordan, with the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, verse 15, And as soon as those bearing the Ark has come as far as the Jordan, and the feet of the priest bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of of harvest now. Now the River Jordan is about a hundred feet across, but very shallow, like 
less than three feet. But this time, when they were crossing, it was flooding, right? And so we have a picture of flooding because the last few, uh, uh, during Chinese New Year period, there was a lot of flooding here in Kuching, right? And uh, so the water uh, departed I mean, when they step into the River Jordan, right? And so it's a picture, right? For us, right, uh, the high priest is a picture of Jesus and Jesus is the a mediator of the all covenant. And the picture is when the priest step into the middle of the river, the water departs, all right? And so Jesus is the mediator. He stands in the middle and, uh, and Joshua 3, 16 is an important verse that we must uh, we must get hold of, right? I realize, right, there are a lot of 316 verse, verses in the Bible that are important, right? God must, like John 316, right? And uh, so Joshua 316 says, the waters came down from above, stood and rose up in a heap very far away, hallelujah, at Adam, right? At a city called Adam, the city that is beside Zeratan, and those flowing down towards the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea were completely cut off, and the people passed over opposite Jericho. Amen? Praise God, right? And uh, here's a picture, right? Because of what Jesus has done, everything it has been re reversed. Everything has rolled back, all right? So, the, the problems in your life, the curses in your life, the sickness in your life, the sin in your life has been rolled back all the way to Adam. Amen? And uh, so here's a picture I want you to see. Uh, that's why, uh, hallelujah, God wants you to inherit, right? So the, your inheritance is your healing. Your prosperity is your healing. Righteousness is your inheritance, right? So all these things, um, so the first Revelation first is from the crossing of the river Jordan, right? So the second picture that I want to show you uh, is also a familiar story and is Jesus at the river Jordan, right? And before he started his ministry, before he did anything, uh, this is the first thing God did for him at the river Jordan. That is from Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. It says that Jesus came from Galilee to the, jo from, from, uh, to the Jordan to John to be baptised by him, right? So here's the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. And uh, there's two uh, important revelations from this story and from this, from the second story of the river uh, Jordan, right? So the first revelation that I want to show you is this, right? When Jesus was baptized here, see here, Matthew 3.16, right? So there's a lot of important 3.16 verses in the Bible. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went from the river, from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to uh, rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. All right? So at the, at the River Jordan, this is the revelation that Jesus had from the Heavenly Father. And God says, You are my beloved Son. All right? Praise the Lord. Why am I sharing with you this? Because uh, we are put in Christ. And in Christ, we are also the beloved of the Lord, right? Every, uh, at almost at the end of our services, our online service, we hear the word, right? Greatly blessed, uh, deeply loved, highly favoured, right? And this is who you are. You are the beloved of the Lord. In Christ, you are the beloved of the Lord. Let me show you from the New Testament also, right? And um, hallelujah, praise the Lord, right? Um, I think Ephesians 1, Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 1, 3 talks about... Uh, we are accepted in the beloved, right? And that's that's the same word there, right? You are the beloved of the Lord. And so there, right, uh, whenever you feel that, you know, um, things are not, I was just, I was just uh, fellowshipping my brother and I was just sharing with him, hey, sometimes we just need to receive the love of God more than anything else. Amen. Praise the Lord, right? Um, let me show you from... Um, the other revelation here from Romans 6 verse 4, right? And this, this is the identity we have in Christ. Romans 6 verse 4 says, Therefore we will bear it with Him by baptism into death, right? So uh, every, every believer is encouraged to be baptized, right? Uh, you are born again not, 
not because of baptism, even though there are teachings, there are people who say, oh, you, you must be born again and be baptised. Yes, you must be born again. Uh, we encourage you to be baptised, but uh, salvation is through receiving Jesus only, right? But uh, baptism is the outward sign of what happens inside you, right? But uh, this is why baptism is important, right? Romans 6 verse 4 says, Therefore we were buried with Him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life, right? So what happened at the cross is this, right? You died with Christ, you were buried with Christ, and uh, after three days when Jesus rose from the dead, you raised from Him, right? And therefore now, because you died, you qualify for resurrection life. And you need to see that, right? And you must have a revelation of this, right? Every one of you, right, watching this, hey, you have died, right? You died, right? 2,000 years ago, right? You, you have died. And, um, but now, the life that you are living in Christ is not the, uh, the life that comes from Adam, right? Remember your sin, your uh, sickness, your curses, your disease, right? Has rolled back, all right? Yeah. Uh, at the cross all the way back to Adam. We give everything back to Adam, right? We don't want the things that are from him, right? And Colossians 2, 12 uh, is similar to Romans 6, 4 says, buried with him in baptism in whom also you were raised through the faith of the working of God, raised him from the dead, right? Therefore, the life that you are living in now, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So every day when you wake up, I'm living in resurrection life. I'm living Jesus' life. Amen. I'm no longer bound by uh, the law of sin and death, right? No longer bound by Adam, right? You died with Christ, right? You were buried with Christ, right? And uh, that's why uh, baptism points you to that, right? Amen. And uh, so, I know you're not baptised in the River Jordan, right? We baptise some people in uh, different rivers, different places, in hotels. Uh, I even buried, uh, not buried, baptised somebody in a hotel, buffed up once, all right? <laughs> well, <laughs> amen? But that's not important, right? The important is what happened at the cross. And baptism points, uh, points us to what happened at the cross, amen? The other interesting stories, uh, that happened in the River Jordan, happened in the Old Testament, Testament to a Gentile, to a Syrian officer, to a man called Naaman, right? In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 9 and verse 10, it says, And Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, right? And stood at the door of the house of Elisha, and he went to the prophet, right? So this is a mighty man who has great strength, who has great power, but he had, uh, he has, he had, a, he had a skin problem, right? And uh, he, he, he was suffering from skin disease, right? And then in verse 10, it says, And Elisha sent a message to him saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall come to you, and you shall be clean, right? So to wash in the river Jordan seven times, seven is the number of perfection. It's a picture of the cross, right? So sometimes, uh, Naaman actually in this story, he got offended, right? He says, hey, there are better river in Syria, right? There are better river in Syria and back home, right? Uh, and, but sometimes the things of God doesn't make sense, right? Sometimes when we tell people, we're just telling someone, hey, you, we just need to keep on hearing the good news. We, you need to keep on hearing the gospel of grace, right? Sometimes we think, hey, how can hearing change my life, right? But actually, this is the foolishness of God, but it's the wisdom, uh, it's actually a wise thing, amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God, right? And, and sometimes we think, oh, the Bible says, take communion, right? Take communion. How can homu communion heal me? How can communion heal me? But this is the thing of God, right? Wash yourself, dip yourself in the river Jordan seven times, amen? And, and we, we just need to hear the word of God and obey the word of God and believe the word of God, amen? Praise the Lord, right? And then verse 14, finally he agreed, right? And he went down and dipped seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came out like the flesh of a little boy and he was clean, right? God not only healed him, right? But gave 
uh, restore, uh, praise God, right? Flesh of a little boy means the renewal of youth. Make him young again. I like that, right? I believe that. So at the River Jordan, uh, one of the inheritance that the body of Christ have not really seen or really believe, and uh, it's the renewal of youth. Amen. And it's an inheritance for you and I, right? So as I was just preparing this, hey, I want to say to, to all of you uh, here, Grace Unlimited, the renewal of youth is an inheritance and we shall not be ashamed of it, right? There are, you can use all the skin products, uh, um, use Botox and all those things, right? But these are just physical ways. But let me tell you, in Jesus is the renewal of youth, right? If nobody else uh, in the body of Christ received this, Right, you receive this with me, right? Together with me, amen? We take this inheritance, amen? That in Christ, that we will grow young. Hallelujah. At your next birthday, you look younger, amen? Right, for every birthday, you look younger, right? Can you see that? It's the you, renewal of you, it's adolescence like a boy again, amen? Praise the Lord, right? And now I just, I just want to cross-reference Psalms 103 verse 5. It says, Who satisfy your mouth with good, your youth is renewed like the eagle. Amen. So when you satisfy your mouth with good, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. All the good things. The gospel is good news. The gospel is good things. And when we keep on hearing it, hallelujah, praise God, right? The Bible says, what, uh, your youth is renewed like the eagles. And I was just reading this. You know, the eagle is one animal that has renewal of youth, right? Uh, the, the eagle lives to be to be about 70 years but halfway through right it's uh, secluded itself it goes away some way uh, quiet and it has renewed of youth um, it has it will grow new big new talons new feathers right and after that period it has renewal of youth likewise right and so the Bible is very accurate I believe it I declare it that you will have renewal of youth as you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. So this year, right, 2021, be a year of renewal of youth for all of you. All right? As you uh, look at what Jesus has done for you, renewal of you is found in the gospel. Renewal of youth is found in uh, what in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Right? It's part of the inheritance, like healing, like uh, restoration of everything. Amen? Praise God, right? Uh, this I'm really excited. I, I will share more on this probably next Sunday, right? So do join us again next week. Um, hallelujah, praise God, right? So everything good is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? And, and in closing, I want to show you this from that, you know, to sum all this up. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 10, it says, But when you go over the river Jordan and live in the land of the Lord, your God is giving you to inherit. And when He has given you rest from all your enemies so that you live in safety, right? Praise God, right? So your inheritance is resting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God, right? That's why we rest today. Amen? Praise the Lord. Right? So when Joshua actually talks about the rest, um, Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 4, it paints a good picture for all of us, right? Let's rest read Hebrews chapter 4 in closing. Hebrews 4 verse 8 says, For if Joshua has given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. What, what day is that? Our day, right? So that there remains a rest to the people of God. For he who has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his, right? Let me repeat to you uh, Hebrews 4 verse 10. For he who has entered into his rest, God's rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his, right? Why, why did God uh, rested? Because his work is finished, right? After God has created the world, right? On the seventh day, he rested because he saw that everything is good. Likewise, right? Jesus has finished the work on the cross and declared that everything is good in our life. Amen? And therefore, we rest, right? Healing is yours. I have a, I have a revelation which I will share next Sunday, right? Uh, it's a powerful revelation. Righteousness is yours. Amen? Renewal of youth is yours. Amen? We don't have to work for it. We don't have to beg God for it. Um, praise God, right? And uh, sometimes people think Christians think, oh, I need to pray more. I need to fast. I need to do this. No. Stop working 
start resting, start hearing, start believing in what Jesus has done for you. Amen? For this is the work that God has accomplished for you. Amen? So rest, brothers and sisters, in Christ because of what Jesus has done. Amen? So this week, right? This week, remember the miracle of the A Jordan, right? Praise the Lord, right? That God, uh, that, I mean, Jesus greater than Michael Jordan. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. As great as Michael Jordan is, he's incompa- uh, Jesus is incomparable to him. Amen? Jesus is greater than him in all areas. Right? Amen? And uh, praise God. But I, I pray that you will see this. Amen? That God uh, wants you to enter the, the, the promised land, um, to go down into the river Jordan so that you may be able to rise. Right? We humble ourselves, the Bible says, before the mighty, the mighty hand of God or before the, the cross so that God is able to lift us up in due time. Amen? And when we humble ourselves, it's because we say, hey Lord, we cannot do anything, but you have done everything. And our place is to believe. Our place is to rest in what you have done, right? So our rest is greater than what uh, Joshua had at the River Jordan. Our rest is in the greater Joshua, in Jesus Christ. Amen. And therefore, we are able to rest in the finished work. Amen. So I pray that you are blessed, right? So look at uh, then two more of us. Right, 11 says, Therefore, let us labor to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall into after the same example of unbelief, right? So we labor in a sense. Uh, that's the only labor we need, right? To rest. Every day we get up and say, Oh, your brain tells you to, Oh, do this, do this, do this, right? But your, we says, Hey, I'm going to rest in what Jesus has done, right? And then, first 12 is very important. Do you know that? Right? Sometimes we are just quote verse 12. Many people just quote Hebrews 4, verse 12, right? But Hebrews 4, verse 12 is linked to verse 11, verse 10, right? And it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing apart of souls and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, right? So the Word of God, the, the Gospel of grace is what will give you rest. Amen? Hallelujah. So every morning, every day when you feed on the Word of God, that's your resting time. That's your sailor time. That is what will give you rest. Amen? Uh, you know, uh, just playing music every day, quiet music cannot give you rest. Alright? The rest is found in Jesus. Interesting, right? It says between joints and marrow. Marrow is where, uh, where your antibodies are being produced. Right? Your immune system uh, comes from bone marrow. Right? Praise God. So if you keep on hearing the word of God, amen, you will be protected from COVID-19. Amen? That that's your immune system being strengthened when you hear the word of God. Right? So praise the Lord. So we rest in the word of God. We rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God, right? So may you see, uh, may, may you receive your miracles this week, right? Hallelujah. Receive the miracles of the A Jordan or the IA Jordan today. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, right? So before we, we close this service, let me uh, say the prayer of benediction over you. And I'll do a different benediction today uh, from Psalm 67. Um, praise the Lord, right? It's a different Psalms that we, uh, it's a different benediction, but I, I was just reading it. Hey, hey, it's such a blessing, right? So let me bless you with it. Psalms 67 verse 1 says, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause His face to shine upon us. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall you her increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the earth shall fear Him. All the earth shall worship Him. We praise Him because He, because he has blessed us. What interestingly, these verses uh, has three blessings, right? So may you go out this week with a triple blessings of God, right? This week, right? May you be blessed in every area of your life because of what Jesus has done. As I declare it over you. I say amen to that in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Dear brother and sister, thank you for staying with us. I pray that you are blessed through the messages. If you are first time joining us our online service, I'd like to invite you to pray this prayer together with me as to receive Him into your life as your personal Lord Savior. Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me and dying for me at the cross. You cleanse me and pronounce me completely clean through the shedding of your precious blood through the cross. I now receive you as my Savior and Lord. All things have passed away and all things in me have become new. Thank you, Father, that you see me righteous in Christ and you are my holiness. You engrave my name in your palm and in your heart for you love me now teach me to see myself through the lens of christ father i give thanks to you amen brother and sister if you met that prayer together with me for the first time i'd like to congratulate you and welcome you to join in our family if you stay in coaching do WhatsApp us and type new friend so we can stay connected with you and we have a welcoming gift for you too. Our team have created a wonderful smartphone wallpaper, our team for this year, the year of drawing near to Jesus. It is now available to download and the link is at our description box down below. You can save the wallpaper from the link given. Subsequently, you can share it to your friends and family and set it as your phone wallpaper. Let this be a good reminder for you that this year is a different year because He will pour out His Spirit towards you so you can be blessed. Do stay close with us through our digital platform as our announcement will be posted up in this platform from time to time. So, make sure you get yourself updated and encouraged throughout the time. If you have a testimony that you experience through this good news, how God has done great things in your life, we would truly love to hear from you. On my screen here have our WhatsApp contact number. You could just drop us your testimony by WhatsApp us and we could celebrate and rejoice together with you. Besides, if you are going through a difficult time at this season, we want you to know that we are here and ready for you. You can WhatsApp us and we can pray together with you and stand in faith together with you, believing God for your breakthrough to manifest. And I believe that He surely will work mightily on your behalf. Through the cross, you are made righteous and through the divine exchange, you are highly favored, deeply loved, and greatly blessed by our heavenly Jesus. Believe it, and you shall see the battle has won. Brother and sister, be blessed, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.
Thank you.